Hmong monastics and lay people of various traditions alike, there is a nasty myth going around nowadays. Many teachers claim that it is literally impossible to escape suffering and that the best thing you can do is to lessen it to some degree. While I do not think that those people willingly mislead their followers, the result of their words and actions are nonetheless detrimental. If you do not believe that an escape is possible, you will not even try. A total escape from suffering, stream entry, is still possible today. Today we learn why and what I mean by stream entry, because it is also a very mystified word nowadays. Anyway, so what kind of myths and wrong views are there floating around concerning the word stream entry, sutapati, or whatever you want to call the breakthrough to the dumb? Well, first of all, there are meditators, teachers and meditation teachers, both lay people and monastics alike, that sometimes quite openly say that suffering is inevitable, that you cannot escape it. According to them, the best thing you can do is to lessen your suffering by applying certain meditation-related band-aids or techniques on top of the anguish one experiences, and claiming that they go directly against what the Buddha taught at the very core. Sometimes such people even go as far as saying that later disciples of the Buddha even lied about an escape to gain arms food and to stay fed. And they are very open about that. And I find that uh, quite puzzling and uh, even very unwholesome. <laughs> and a similarly widespread of wrong view exists among many lay people and of, various, of various countries and various traditions. And those people think that wide stream entry might be possible. It is only possible for monastics. The lay life, according to them, makes it impossible to attain any higher distinction worthy of the noble ones, even given the thousands of lay uh, Arya in the suttas. <laughs> there were more lay Arya than there were uh, Sangha dwelling Arya. What they do is a bit like saying that you can only be an, well, let's say, exceptional athlete if you are also getting paid for it and thus officially yield the title of an athlete. They fail to notice that the training of a professional and the training of an amateur is the same. And this is literally the same when it comes to the Dhamma practice. The training is not different. It is the same. And you can, well, at least under many lay circumstances, you can practice just right. For many people nowadays, it's even better to stay in the lay context. The conditions are oftentimes good enough. Yet other people take a very different route and completely redefine what awakening and liberation are to make it fit their views better. It is not rare that people redefine stream entry as some distinct meditation event where your consciousness blinks out for a moment. According to them, that blip could be the stream entry that the Buddha talked about, even though it, it fulfills none of the criteria that the, Buddha, that the suttas mention, and the suttas never even mentioned that for a while. They mentioned the word cessation, but it's always a cessation of self. It's a cessation of suffering, it's not a cessation of your, I don't know, consciousness or something. And they simply claim that stream entry has nothing to do with suffering or craving anymore, and shift the emphasis of the training to some, something completely different. To those two are people uh, the Buddha would have outright called evil or misleaders or deceivers of the world. But enough of that. You can over and undershoot the mark in many different ways. There are literally limitless wrong views floating around. There are traditions in which so many sage-like qualities are assigned to stream enterers that any normal person must conclude that stream entry is not for them. There are outright myths circulating that stream entry is so freakishly hard that you don't even have to try. That too is, very unwholesome, is a very unwholesome view that is not supported by the suttas. You might be surprised by all the things that a stream enterer can still do that are usually ignored or denied by modern traditions. In short, those people heavily romanticize the right view, they heavily romanticize the Dhamma, so that uh, many people tend to get intimidated and do not even try. But enough on that. Now that we know a number of common wrong views, what is the actual right view that is supported by the suttas? In simple terms, stream entry is not an attainment, it is a throwing away, it is an undoing of every wrong view that you are holding. You have carried around those wrong views for possibly millennia or thousands of lives if you believe in rebirth. And the right view is a shift in perception that removed the emphasis from me as a protagonist of the story towards a detached mode of being. It is a super mundane thing, yet at the same time it, it is a supra mundane thing. Anyway, I don't want to make this video a detailed stream entry analysis. I have old videos on that, so if you are interested, look there. For now, it is sufficient to say that a stream enterer has seen the way out of suffering for himself. That is the main quality of a stream enterer. 
He has thrown away all the wrong views so that only right view remains, and he has found the way out of suffering. He has practiced sufficiently on the Noble Eightfold Path for possibly a very long time on end, and as such, he has seen the end of suffering for himself. He is at least partially liberated, and most of the suffering is gone for him. Not just in the lives to come, but in this very life, there is basically none of the suffering left. But just as we are on the same page, so that we are on the same page here, here are a number of synonyms for what a stream enter is. There is a right view, there is stream entry, there is a noble one, Seika, Arya, Pro Brahman, the opening of the Dhamma I, wisdom, knowing and seeing, one in training, a Sotapanna, a stream winner, seven times at most returner, a Dhamma follower, a faith follower, knowing the Four Noble Truths, and all those things are pretty much synonymous with having understood the Dhamma sufficiently. And there are probably countless more synonyms that I have missed and could not think from the, off, uh, from the top of my head. But as you can see, next to Arahanship, stream entry is the most important point in the practice, and few other things are discussed as much in the suttas. If you look at the suttas, there are suttas where people attain Arahanship, but there are just as many, if not many more suttas, where people attain stream entry and understand the Dhamma. The understanding of the Dhamma is what stream entry is. Before that, you have no idea what the Dhamma actually is. At least you have not realized it in your own experience. And here there is a list of actual qualities of a stream enterer according to the sutta that I like to talk about, because that list of qualities is also very much mystified and mistaken nowadays. And to um, take any Sankara as permanent is something that a Suttapana can actually not do. He cannot take any Sankara as pleasant, and he cannot take any Dhamma as self. He cannot kill his mother. He cannot kill his father, he cannot kill an arahant, he cannot maliciously shed the Buddha's blood, he cannot split the Sangha, or he cannot follow any other teacher than the Buddha. He has complete faith. Those are the actual qualities <laughs> of the Sotapanna that the suttas mention. And as you can see, there are quite a number of things that a Sotapanna can still do. And the suttas do mention that. There are lots of things that uh, Sotapannas in the suttas can do, like drinking alcohol sometimes. They can break, at least as a lay uh, person, all the precepts, pretty much, <laughs> they can still kill. It's just that they cannot commit offenses that are so great that they uh, can be reborn in any of the lower realms in the netherworld, as the suttas would sometimes say. Yeah. And as a small example, quite often it is claimed that the suttapanna cannot break the precept. Yet the suttas ascribe those properties to an arahant only, but never to a suttapanna. While the suttas do say that a suttapanna is perfected in virtue, that does not mean that he cannot habitually break precepts or rules as a monk. The suttas even talk about a drunkard Sotapanna that many lay people were complaining about. They even said that nowadays everyone can be a noble one or something like that. Quite literally in the suttas, they were complaining to the Buddha, and the Buddha called them fools. And he said that that monk or that person in particular did the work on the deathbed. <laughs> he already had the right view, just not the fruit of stream entry. Yeah. But further, there are even cases where noble ones accidentally killed, lied, or broke any of the minor monk rules, and sometimes even attempted to commit suicide. All those things are of course not very likely, but they are very possible, even if they do not sound very flattering. So that removes some of the glory <laughs> from the attainment of the Sotapati, let's put it like that. There are still a lot of things that you can, uh, can do wrong. But if you transgress any of those rules, and that is one of the special qualities of the Sotapanna, you will try to make amendments. You will try to fix the damage that you have done. And just for comparison, here are nine things that an Arahant cannot do that are often ascribed to a Sotapanna. Arahants cannot store up possessions, cannot intentionally kill, uh, kill any form of life, they cannot steal, they cannot perform sexual intercourse, they cannot tell a deliberate lie, act unwholesomely out of desire, act unwholesomely out of ill will, act unwholesomely out of delusion, or act unwholesomely out of fear. A Sotapanna still has sensual lust and sensual hate. They still have aversion. It is just that both are significantly weaker compared to a Pedusana, even though the weakening of the fetters, which is the underlying mechanism that generates the actuality of craving, those things, the roots, are still there, the, the shackles, the bondage, the fetters, those are still there. And just on a side note, you are not even protected from telling bullshit about the Dhamma as a Sotapanna or higher. Even one with a very immature right view can be a better teacher than... Yeah, any of the very progressed monks. If that monk or that other person who is teaching the Dhamma doesn't also have a natural inclination for teaching, then they are not a good teacher. The ability to teach and the ability to see and practice the Dhamma 
are two very different things, and they should not be mixed up. People often tend to forget that and put a foot upon on a pedestal, but stream entry is factually the beginning of the noble eightfold path. This is a person who has just started their serious and targeted training, not a person who ended it. The Sotapanna still has a lot of work to do, and is even, uh, it is uh, even easy as a Sotapanna to become negligent. Uh, it is no accident that the Buddha often urged his advanced monks not to be negligent, as that would give rise to remorse later. But he really encouraged them to train, because it can be so free of suffering, so comfortable, that you don't have to do anything. Yet at the same time, even the lowest of the Sotapanna ultimately exceeds the attainments of even the Buddha's past teachers who mastered the 7th and the 8th jhana, which are very, very high attainments. It is a beginning and an end at the same time, simple and profound, yet world-transcending. That is something to keep in mind. And just to make this very, very clear, and to demystify much of what people say and claim about Sotapanna's nowadays, dream entry is possible, dream entry is attainable, dream entry is realistic. In fact, stream entry is much easier to attain than even the first jhana, let alone more than that, unless you go by a watered-down definition of what a jhana even is, or what a stream entry even is. <laughs> and with all the suttas and instructions available nowadays, all you need is a sufficient foundation in virtue, and you will have to see the Dhamma, as instructed, uh, illustrated by the hand and the ex-simile. But in the work of renunciation, and the lake that is your mind will be clear enough for you to see through. That simply must be the case. There is no way around that. It is much easier to attain stream entry than to attain the jhana. Really getting rid of all the taints in your experience, that is freakishly hard. That is not necessary if you simply want to attain the right view. You have to have much less than that. It is much, much easier. You do not need superhuman levels of seclusion. You do not need extreme virtue or a perfected monk. You do not need many things. Yet stream entry has to be the absolute number one priority by far in your life, if you want to go beyond the world. All you really need is self-honesty, radical self-honesty, even discipline, patience, and usually a good reason to even practice at all, like a divine messenger event. And even in a temporarily empty room, in the middle of a crowded city, can you make a breakthrough to the Dhamma? That is perfectly possible. <laughs> Those are things that you can do. Dream entry is just this, the attainment of the path where you have thrown all your fundamentally wrong views and delusions away. All that remains is right view, then, and that comes about through renunciation, throwing away of everything that obstructs clear seeing. It is not mythical, not unattainable. You are not a saint yet, <laughs> at all. There is still a lot of work to do, yet it is attainable with the suttas available everywhere, even if the vast majority of modern traditions are indeed wrong. Instead of complaining and lamenting all the time, rather focus on the positive side. The Dhamma is still available. If you really look for it, if you really want it, you will find the true Dhamma and will be liberated in the end. That is very much possible. Do not think of the right view as a divine experience. Do not think of it as unattainable. If you think it is impossible, you will not even try. It is very possible, even for lay people, but you have to give it your all. You literally see that there is nothing in the entire world or next world for you to hold on to. Throw it all away and become burdenless, light and joyful. Your life can then start flowing along with next to no effort. That is what a state of jhana is. But anyway, let us now come to the most important point. First, stream entry is often misunderstood, mystified, or presented as inattainable. None of this is true. Stream entry is still very possible, and even easier to get than any of the jhana. It is not an attainment. It is a release, a throwing away of a burden, not something to boast about. <laughs> if you find people boasting about stream entry, then you can be quite sure that uh, they are very likely not a real stream entry. Well, of course, there can be monks even who boast it a lot, and sometimes they do have their attainment, but it would still be unwholesome to boast about it. But yeah, if you wish, you very much can make a breakthrough, even today, so many years later. But yeah, this should be enough for today. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoy what I do, feel free to like, subscribe, and do all the YouTube things. But until then, yeah, maybe until next time, and until then, I wish you a pleasant day and uh, goodbye.